Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace. The Natural Cook. I'm Anna Gershenson. As we promised you in the previous episode when we were cooking the heritage turkey, we are now back using the bounty that we found at the farm, at the Red Shirt Farm, where they grow beets and kabocha squash and decorative pumpkins and carrots and potatoes. Everything that I'm going to be cooking with today grew on that farm. So I'm very excited to eat this deliciousness, to cook with it first, of course, and then eat it. Um, I brought you to show the vegetable brush that I'm using when I'm washing vegetables at home and these carrots were just pulled out of the ground and we actually even tried eating them with, with some dirt on them because that's really wonderful for your microbiome, considering that you know what soil your carrot was growing in. And Jim eats it like that all the time, and he's very healthy. So um, first with salad. So this kale grew on the farm, and it's very beautiful and curly, and uh, it also has very nice soft texture. And what we are going to do is make a raw salad for Thanksgiving because we are going to eat everything cooked. So it's really a very nice idea to introduce something that is raw, that still has you know, fiber intact, uh, and that is going to be also helping you with digestion. And when we eat raw things, we also feel like a different kind of energy. So um, they grow on this stalk. So what w it's very easy to just either take it and pull it with your hand to remove the leaves, or you can take your knife and slide it down and just shave the leaves off the stalk. And then don't discard it. If you are making a soup or making a, uh, some kind of you know, vegetable stock or something, this is going to be really um, handy to add it there. That's what I always do. And um, of course, everybody knows about wonderful properties of kale. It's in brassica family. And we are going to be also using Brussels sprouts today from the same family. And so it has, uh, it's really one of the super vegetables. And you want to include uh, something from brassica family to your diet on an everyday basis, be it cauliflower or um, broccoli or any of the kales. All right, so um, in order to soften the kale, we are going to treat it with salt. So first we are going to cut it into bite-sized pieces because you don't want to have to deal with, with the huge leaves, of course. It's your salad and any time when you are making a salad, you want to have things that you can comfortably put into your mouth. So you can see how vibrant this color is. And massaging salt into it will soften it. And then while you are preparing other vegetables for the salad, you can actually just let it sit. And kale likes to have very assertive dressing to go with it. So for the dressing, we are going to put, um, we are going to use white wine vinegar and mustard, and um, and then it will really complement um, the kale, and maybe we'll sweeten it a little bit with maple syrup. We always have to taste what we make because otherwise we don't know what we're really cooking, right? Okay, 
So we are putting it into a bowl and make sure that you have good size bowl. We actually got quite a bit of kale here, but after it wilts, you will see how it will reduce in volume and there will be much, much less of it. Make sure that you do not over salt it, but enough. Okay, so you want to do it to massage it, like just to squeeze between your hands, as you see me doing. Just like that, probably for 30 seconds or so. And then you can let it sit and the salt will continue doing its, its magic, drawing, drawing the, um, the water out of the vegetable and collapsing its fiber. Okay, so looks good to me. Let it sit while we are working with other vegetables. What I'm going to do also, um, you could use a red, red onion, which, which is um, wonderful to add because of all the onions, this, this has most of nutritional qualities. However, I decided to use leek here because leek has this prebiotic fiber. Uh, of course, onion has it as well, but I don't think people know enough to uh, what to do with leek and that's why I decided that I'm going to add this to the salad instead of the onion that people really know uh, about. Okay, so the leek will be sliced very, very thinly because this way, if you don't have um, big pieces of leek, then um, smaller pieces are easier to eat, more pleasant to eat, and also they will uh, soften up faster. So this is our um, julienne of leek. And what you want to do, when Jim was harvesting the leek, he actually, um, uh, I always say that you have to make sure to wash your leek well because um, it grows in sand. And this is exactly what we, we witnessed. And when you see the third part of this uh, Thanksgiving episode, you will see uh, how, how Jim was harvesting it. And so make sure that you cut it uh, long way, you know, trim, trim the outer leaves, the green leaves, dark green that you can save for broth, and then cut it lengthwise, horizontally, all the way to the end, or as, as, as much as you are going to use. And then under running water, you know, peel off these leaves and wash them to make sure that all the sand is gone. And then you are ready to work with it. You also want to, to, uh, to dry it with a paper towel or with a cloth towel because you don't want any kind of water in your salad. Water will dilute the flavors of your salad. So make sure that um, it is dried. Okay, another vegetable I chose for the salad is the beet, and this is a yellow beet. It looks very pretty. Look how beautiful the color is, bright orange. And when it peel it, it becomes yellow. And it also has very interesting, beautiful marbling on the inside. So this, um, this beet is a baby beet. It's, it's very tender. And so it's a good candidate to go into a raw salad. And this is what we're going to do. Again, I'm going to julienne it and I'll, I'll share with you exactly how I julienne it. Okay, so as you can see, the color of the leek is changing. It's darkening, which means that the salt is doing its work. And we are going to now toss it together with the leek again to make sure that the same thing happens with leek and it gets softened. And now we are going to take our beet, trim it, and I use the leaves. Again, leaves are wonderful to put into a smoothie or to put into a soup or just saute with garlic and olive oil and, and consume that way. Okay, so I am thinly slicing my beet and then I will um, place it this way and fan it out. And now holding it tightly, I'm going to cut it. And when it's fanned out, it's much easier for me to hold it in, the, in one place and to cut it just as thin as I want it to be. So this is what 
um, what it looks like. As you can see, these are very nice um, thin pieces. And so they will add a very beautiful contrast to our green uh, leeks and green kale. Okay, and um, I also have decided to add pumpkin seeds to the salad because um, they add very nice, very nice um, healthy fat. So eating seeds and nuts is wonderful. They're a good snack, but I also, they are very good addition to your salads. So please don't forget. What I did with the pumpkin seeds, I toasted them a little bit. I uh, don't use the oven for that. I just throw them on a skillet and then I watch uh, and listen because um, you, 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 you can also smell that actually because you can smell the toasted pumpkin seed. You can hear it start to start popping and um, it's, it's just delicious in a salad. If you want to put other seeds, like um, sunflower seeds, for example, that would be too good too. But because we have our theme of Thanksgiving, it's lovely to add pumpkin seeds because it's the pumpkin season and um, you are enjoying everything that grows together, together in a bowl. Okay, so now that this is done, we are going to quickly make our dressing. So I'll use um, some mustard, Dijon mustard. Then I'll add some salt. As you see, I just take a pinch and then I can taste. Grind some black pepper and add a little bit of maple syrup to make it kind of a little sweet and sour. Um, uh, white wine vinegar. Then after you mix it together, you will start drizzling oil. The oil is going to be emulsifying into the dressing and it will create a lovely, lovely um, dressing for you. So let's see how it tastes. Mm -hmm. Very nice a little more salt and a little more um, mustard to make it zestier. Okay. All right. So now you can you can toss everything together and you can add your seeds dressing don't overdress the salad. This is something that a lot of people make a mistake doing. And by the way, unlike other greens that wilt so quickly and cannot be eaten the next day, you know that once you dress your salad that you really have to toss your, your greens. Um, it doesn't happen to kale. You can really um, save the kale till next day. So this salad will be, uh, will be uh, good enough to eat the next day. I don't advise to make it in advance, far in advance, because you're losing nutritional qualities. Okay, really lovely. If you want to, to add some, some kind of cheese, like feta to it, you can do it as well. So you have your lovely salad for Thanksgiving table. And it looks so beautiful. Okay, so now we are going to proceed quickly to roasting the vegetables. So for that, we chose carrots, Brussels sprouts. And by the way, I don't know if you've seen how Brussels sprouts grow. They will see them in that segment that we'll show you. But this is how they grow on a stalk. And this is how they pre are preserved for a long time in a cool space. You don't have to cut them off. Uh, then when you are ready to, to use them, you just either uh, like break it off or cut it with a knife, clean up the outer side that might be a little bit damaged, and then you are ready to proceed with it. So again, these beautiful Yukon Golds, I did not 
I'm not going to peel them because the peel is where all the vitamins are and they're organic, so there is no need to peel them. So what we are going to do is just cut everything into bite-sized pieces, convenient for roasting. And remember that um, all vegetables cook at different pace. So for example, carrots are the hardest, and so they cook the longest. So if they're all cooking together, you want to make sure that they are cooking at the same, at, at like uh, simultaneously, meaning that they would be ready at the same time. So you want to have your carrots much smaller in size. I will put the Brussels sprouts whole because they are so small. Otherwise, if they are, if they are big, you can halve them or quarter them. Okay, and um, onion is another vegetable that I'm going to cut for this. I love red onions in roasting. And so um, remember also that, um, that most vitamins are closest to the skin. So peel just enough that you need to take off, but preserve all other layers that are not damaged so that you can use them. And I'll show you how I am cutting onions for roasting because I like them in wedges. I don't like it when they fall apart into small pieces. And so I preserve, I preserve the stem. And then I just trim it, but I, I let the root be intact, as you can see. And then I would cut it in half and then holding it I will cut it into thin wedges, just like that, going round and round, and again, making sure that your wedges are the same size. Okay, so it goes in together with our potato, and we are going to add our Brussels sprouts, and I'll show you how I'm going to cut my carrots. So let's put this here. Um, so I'm not peeling the carrots either because they're organic and they were just picked from the soil, but you can, you can peel them or you can scrape them with a knife the way I, I grew up doing. Only in this country I was introduced to, um, to this uh, vegetable peeler. So, okay, so you will cut it like into really like small thin pieces because you want them to be, to be cooked at the same time as your other vegetables. Okay, so that looks good to me. And then the last vegetable that will go into it is kabocha squash. And this is a very, very special squash. This is a Japanese squash, and I don't think people know much about it. It has kind of the same kind of texture as, you know, sweet potato, closer to sweet potato than, than to a pump, to like a butternut squash or any other squash. It also has edible skin, um, and it has fewer carbs than any other squash, which is really good for you because um, you, you don't want to over-inundate your body with, with too many carbohydrates. So you are going to scoop out the seeds. And by the way, you can roast them if you want to. So as you see, it has a lovely bright orange color and usually they come um, with, a, with a green shell, not with the orange, but Jim uh, grows the orange one, so I was delighted. And um, I usually roast it by itself just with onions and cutting it into wedges. But here, you can hear it crackling I'm going to cut it into, into smaller pieces, just about like that, because it really softens pretty fast. Okay, so we are going to add these, and I will show you how I season it. I will add more to put them to roast, but for now I just want to show you how I do the seasoning, so I will throw in salt and pepper, drizzle with olive oil, and then toss them together. And I kind of taste a little bit to see 
whether it's salty enough because all that salt is going to be absorbed as it's roasting. I roasted at 425 degrees for about 40 minutes. So I would put it to my tongue and if it's not really like really seasoned well, I would add more salt. So then I would put these uh, thyme sprigs and stick them in and then halfway you can open the oven, you can take your spatula, toss them around and put them in until they are nice and soft. So um, we are going to take a break and when they are ready, we are going to show them to you and to taste them and let you know how they taste it. So our luscious, beautiful vegetables are on the baking tray. They have been seasoned with salt and pepper and dressed with olive oil. And now I'm going to just end putting thyme sprigs on top and putting them into the oven at 425 degrees for, a, for about 35 minutes. I will check them halfway, toss them around, and then when they are ready, I'm going to make sure to share with you what they look like roasted. So let's finish our vegetables. Here we have kale salad and there is one more ingredient that I would like to add to it and I want to show you um, how I take care of pomegranate because a lot of people might be deterred from eating this healthy and delicious fruit. Um, so you have to take out the middle and then what I do is I make these shallow cuts all around maybe five of them and then this allows me to take section at a time and get the seeds and then we'll add them to the salad they will add nice color as well as um, beautiful flavor which the salad will benefit from so as you can see these are such beautiful seeds and it's so easy to just remove them so the season for pomegranates is just starting. So now is a good time to start eating them and to enjoy all their healthful properties. Um, I think there is more and more attention now is being paid to pomegranate and its um, healthy qualities. So I'm sure that um, you would want to invest your time. And as you see, it's not so difficult. It does take a little bit of time, but if you uh, take them out and put them in a little jar and then stock them in your refrigerator. You are ready then to pop them into your mouth anytime you want. And um, you can basically eat these seeds as well. Um, the, the seed inside, you don't have to, but it is totally edible and would add some fiber to, to your diet. So you see how beautiful it is. And also, this salad doesn't have a lot of tartness. So when you eat it, to get a pop of this, um, of this sour flavor will be real welcome, as well as juiciness. OK, so now you have a better idea of how to prepare this delicious salad. And you can make it at home. So you'll mix it in, and it's ready. So now we are going to pull our vegetables from the oven. Our vegetables were roasting at 450 degrees. So I, uh, what I did, I was um, um, taking them out and tasting and trying to see if they are seasoned properly and whether the texture is right. So let's see again. OK. So we have many different vegetables here. And I think that if, um, if you are roasting them, 
try not to crowd them. I think that they were crowded a little bit more than I would have liked to because when they are not crowded, they are not steaming and instead they are crisping up and they are sugars caramelized. So this is my advice for you. Now let's taste um, the squash. Mm. The squash is absolutely ready. It actually has this. It gives you a mouthful. You know how other squashes that you cook are watery? If you put butternut squash to cook, then you will see a lot of liquid appearing before, especially when you cut it in half and roast the whole half. There will be a lot of liquid that then will be reabsorbed. But this didn't really give any liquid. And as you see, um, the, the skin is perfectly edible. And this is a, a very, very colorful and beautiful. What you can do, you can put it on a separate dish or you can put it on a platter together with your turkey. You can surround your turkey with it. And it will be absolutely beautiful sight and also um, very delicious to enjoy eating. So let's put it on a platter and uh, so that it can be ready to be served. And you can actually uh, also sprinkle some pomegranate seeds on top of this as well. So make sure that you remember to take out um, the, the herbs because all you have left now are these sprigs and you don't want to eat them. They are hard and woody. Okay, so this is our Thanksgiving feast. Please make it at home if you're inspired and happy Thanksgiving. Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace.